Hey, this was John. This was John. Hey, this is John at John's Films. I was just watching Eber over at Hardware Canucks do benchmarking on the 2080 Ti, NVIDIA's newest generation of graphics cards. Now, when he tested in DaVinci Resolve, as he did against Premiere, he was testing for productivity applications. He found that the 2080 and the 1060, that is last generation's mid-range card, got about the same results in Resolve. Let's see if we can figure out why that happened. Let's take a look at what we're working with. We have my Threadsmoker workstation, which has an AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950-16 core processor. It has two GeForce 1080 Ti's from Gigabyte using their Extreme Edition Water Force all-in-one water cooler. We have an X399 Gaming Pro Carbon motherboard from MSI, 64 gigabytes of G-Skill Trident Z RAM, and three storage drives, all Samsung M.2 NVMe 960 Pros, one one terabyte for operating system and DaVinci Resolve, another for the project files, and another for delivery and scratch drive. We're going to test across two different configurations of hardware, one utilizing both, 1080 Ti's in SLI mode, and one using only one of those. Next, we'll test them across two different timelines. Those timelines, one includes just an edited and cut together piece of film, H.264, on the GH5, just like Eber at Hardware Canucks used. And then we'll use the exact same timeline with only one difference, noise reduction node, across the entire timeline. I'll test each of these configurations three times and take the average across the runs. So here's the timeline I used to test. It's got about two and a half minutes worth of footage. Again, it's H.264 footage shot on the GH5 on a recent vacation through Grand Tetons National Park. For the testing under SLI, I made sure the configuration showed utilization of both GTX 1080 Ti graphics cards. And when I intended to test with only one graphics card, I disabled one of the graphics cards and ensured, again, that in DaVinci Resolve, I was only utilizing the one graphics card it noted. I monitored my results with the CAM software from NZXT and got my, my uh, time results directly out of the render tab here in DaVinci Resolve. And to ensure it was fair, here are my render settings, H.264 footage. Uh, exported at 4K, 2997 frames per second, best quality possible, automatic keyframing, full data levels, no optimized media, and no rendered cache. Let's see those results. So, as you can see, it's about 26% faster with the SLI configuration when it's got the heavy noise reduction timeline. When it's a standard cut edit timeline, we're only seeing about a 7% difference. And really, I have a couple of Gaussian blurs in there, as well as a few transitions that I think might have affected it. And without those, I'd likely see the results that Eber over at Hardware Canucks saw with his testing. I think his testing was probably uh, on the baseline version of DaVinci Resolve. It did not use any of the special effects. And further, I think he didn't even exercise the, the GPUs, and that's why a 1060 looked like it was great. What it tells me is if you are going to use the base version of DaVinci Resolve and your intention is to cut color and publish, you're not going to see a big difference based on the graphics card you use. And you should probably put that money towards your processor or through your storage. Thanks for watching. If you have any comments, please let me know below. Tell me what I did right. Tell me what I did wrong. Or if you want to see another angle of this data or if you'd like to see different tests in Resolve, please let me know. Thanks a lot. Have a great day.